Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm talking about getting your short game in shape for the new season. And as you can see, I've taken myself off somewhere warm. We're in Fuerteventura today. Because really, to get your, golf, your short game in, in shape, you've got to have decent greens, decent conditions to actually practice in, so that it's similar to what you're actually going to be meeting in the summer months on the golf course at home. If you can't afford to do that, then you're probably better off just looking after your long game until it's actually possible to do that. When you get into the short game, I mean, you can basically say that the short game is just a small version of the normal long game. We, we're working with the same kind of physical rules here, but because of the speed that you're moving the golf club and the shortness of the swing, there is less time for you to make any corrections. And because the club is traveling a lot slower, then the, the interaction with the ground becomes far more serious. So what you've got to first of all get a feel for is how your club is interacting with the ground. And you will actually see in the design of the modern wedges that you can choose between a relatively narrow sole and a wider sole. You're going to find that a wider sole will tend to bump but won't tend to grab into the ground. And a narrow sole won't bump as much but will tend to grab into the ground. So if you tend to be a player who keeps getting stuck in the ground before you actually get to the golf ball, you might be helped with a wider sold club. On the contrary, if you're somebody who's playing off a lot of kind of tight lies and you're actually finding that you're, 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 your wedge is actually causing you to almost top the ball without having the feeling of making a bad action, then maybe a slightly narrower sole will help you. When it comes down to the actual technique, it's all about getting your technique to use the sole of the golf club. If you can get the sole of the golf club to land on the ground just before the ball and slide through the golf ball, then you're always going to be hitting good and simple little kind of chip shots. Now, obviously that was a bit lucky, but it all really comes down to the way that I'm using the golf club there. The next thing you want to be thinking about is which golf club should you be using and there you've got to get a bit objective on it. I know it's very nice, I've got a 58 degree wedge here and it all looks very pretty and it's extremely clever if you're lobbing it up and making it do all these pretty things, but it's dangerous. The more swing, the more joints that you're using in the swing, the more things that can actually go wrong with it. And maybe you ought to be looking at other alternatives in your bag. After all, you have got 14 clubs in it. And maybe there's another one which is better. And I think you'll actually find that getting a club with a little bit less loft, which you don't have to make as much of a swing, will actually give you better um, results if you do that on a regular basis. So you can see here, really, it's almost like I was putting it. I've got a pitching wedge instead of the 50 degree or 58 degree wedge here. And I'm getting the same kind of results with that. But I haven't really got that kind of fear of if I don't quite catch it nicely, it's going to go over the back. I think a lot of times, you know, we're letting our ego make the club decision rather than our intellect. And you want to kind of try and get away with that and, and get into kind of getting statistics on how well and how often you're getting close to the hole. The next thing you've really got to do is look at the dispersion path. And similarly to what we were doing in the last video, how much dispersion are you creating with your wedges? What is the distance dispersion? What is the side dispersion? You will actually find with your chipping and pitching that it has an awful lot more to do with the distance dispersion that it has to do with the lateral dispersion. Getting the same contact on the ball, getting the same distance on the ball is the most difficult thing when it comes to chipping. Once you actually get away from this kind of simple contact with the ball. Again, the contact with the golf ball, don't be looking for this crisp, tight shot. You're not going to find that more than one one every 10 balls. Try to get used to kind of ro kind of bouncing the club through the grass, allowing the sole to interact with the grass. Get into the grass early. 
keep in the grass through impact. Use that sole. If you are finding trouble with the sole, change the golf club. Don't change the technique. Really, if you wanted to say what's the difference between kind of getting a soft and gentle little chippy shot and one which is a little bit more dangerous, it all really comes down to attack angle. And as soon as you start using your wrists, you're going to be steepening the attack angle. As soon as you steepen the attack angle, you're going to have your hands more ahead of the club at impact and you're going to start digging in or you will release that, those wrists too early and you'll start scooping at the ball and you'll have the back end of the sole hitting the ground and the leading edge topping the golf ball over the, over the green. So again, if you can keep it simple, you're probably going to have more success. But once you have a recipe which seems to be working, in order to take it on the golf course, you've got to start building data, building feedback so you know what distances with which clubs are best. And then when you get on the golf course, you're not making any kind of ill-informed decisions. They're all based on fact. You know you can hit that golf club that distance with so much dispersion. And because you know your dispersion, you're not getting wound up when one does go a little long or one does actually catch the ground before the ball and you have a, a poor shot because that happens to you on the driving range as well. And these are the things that you've got to accept. If you remember the mental lesson we did a few, few weeks ago, just basically getting out of your own way, accepting you're gonna hit good shots, you're gonna hit bad shots and around the green, that's no different. But if you can get out really early and get working on your short game, that is going to save you shots and improve your handicap probably quicker than standing on the driving range with a driving range with your seven iron for the next next hundred years. Hope you liked it as ever smash that button if you did. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Big, big shout out to all of the patrons who are supporting the channel. It's such a big help and it helps me to get back here more often and bring you newer, more content. If you'd like a link to become a patron, I'll leave one below there as well. We'll be back next Sunday with the next one. Until then, look after yourselves for the moment.